Big A, I'm in my Vegas hotel room down 2.6K. Guys, don't gamble. Jesus, bro. Sorry to hear that. Take a break. Don't try to chase it. Slime had a bad weekend, to my understanding. He also is down quite a bit, but he can afford it a little more. Will League, do you by chance have a successful podcast that prints you money every month? Bet 2.6K on roulette and double it. <laughs> or you can do that. Let me try Chad's idea. Hey, truck. any thought on crypto market rising meteorically? One of my friends gambled $3,000 on a meme coin and made around five mil in three days. Now he's left his job and spending his time traveling the world. I have a sick coin for you called FOMO coin and it is going to moon. In fact, all your friends are gonna get rich off of it. If you don't invest in my FOMO coin right now, you are literally gonna be missing out on riches and wealth. You're gonna be sitting there on the sidelines. Mail me your money, you can gift the subs. I'll put it in a FOMO coin and you're gonna make, you're gonna moon. I'll, I'll be honest with you, bro. FOMO's always been a thing. There's always gonna be someone out there who strikes it rich on something. Even Ponzi schemes. People people made money off Bernie Madoff, dude. The first wave in. People made money off of, you know, the first wave on GME and then a bunch of people lost money. People made money off of uh, lottery tickets, bro. If you see someone get a lottery ticket, <laughs> you're gonna have some kind of FOMO, but it doesn't mean buying a lottery ticket's a good investment. You just gotta understand. You gotta understand. I mean, I know it's, I guess it. you should be happy for your friend, really. The fact that your friend got a free five mil is kind of dope. A come up in your circle is still come up. GME is a bad example. There was some serious market manipulation. I promise you it is not a bad example. <laughs> GME is a textbook example of FOMO. Apes together strong is complete horseshit. <laughs> the company is not worth the amount of money that it hit at its peak. It's just not, it's not worth that much. The, the company does not generate revenues to be worth a market capitalization that it hit. So market manipulation or no, it was overvalued and people were still buying it as part of this whole apes together strong. Bro, that reminds me of the worst person on fucking earth. Nah, he's not the worst person on earth, obviously. He's not even close, but <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. Adam Aaron, the CEO of AMC. I think this guy is legitimately a piece of shit. I actually don't like him. He makes me upset. He has been playing into the whole apes together strong. He calls himself the last silverback gorilla. He just keeps hyping up and pumping his stupid fucking shitty ass theater stock to unsuspecting broke people, hoping for an easy way to get rich. And it just keeps going down. And he keeps talking about how it's about to moon, how it's about to pump, and it keeps falling and falling and falling. And you know what's happening? At all of these spikes, he's selling. He's talking about how it's gonna moon, how it's gonna pump, how he's never gonna sell anymore. And then he sells, 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 sells. He just keeps dumping his own shares for money on the public while telling him that it's about to moon. He's a piece of shit. And what's really frustrating to me, what really grinds my gears, is that I am weirdly obsessed with this stuff. You know, I, this is what I spend a lot of my free time doing is reading stuff about this and reading this guy's tweets and things like that. And if you read his tweets from back here and you see the replies, they're all like, yeah, yeah, Adam. Yeah, CEO Adam, let's do this, let's moon. Let's show these hedgies what's to what's up. AMC to the moon, baby, we're with you. And then if you read replies to his tweets now, they're like, hey, I can't afford my daughter's college. You fucked me. I hate you. You rat piece of shit. Hey, Adam Aaron, fuck you. You ruined my life. It's all like people that are like completely burnt. Like you read them now, like this year, dude, look, look at where it is now. Look at where it is now in 2024. It's all just like people that have been burnt and hurt and misled because this guy in a fucking suit told him it was going to moon. And so yeah, fuck this guy and everyone like him. What happened last year that tanked it again? Well, I know that right here, Atrioc predicted that AMC was going to zero. Interesting. Yo, Big A, did you see that China Central Bank is buying a bunch of gold? Is that a play to reduce dependence on the US dollar? Yes. All central banks are buying, except for the United States. All central banks are buying a lot of gold right now. Gold's at all time highs, largely due to central bank buying pressures. There is talk of like a gold backed BRICS currency eventually. The BRICS meeting's in Russia this year, so Putin can finally go. He couldn't go to the South Africa one because he's wanted as a war criminal, so he couldn't go. But it is happening. They are buying, I mean, listen, they are buying gold. There's this thing where uh, the United States runs a trade deficit with almost every other country, but especially China, where, you know, we import a lot more than we export to them. And so they end up with a lot of dollars and we end up with a lot of stuff. And it used to be they would take those dollars and they would buy U.S. treasuries. They would kind of recycle it back into our system. They would buy our debt, basically our IOUs. That's how it used to work. It was a nice symbiotic relationship 
if they kept the dollar on top and it was good for us. Now they buy as few of those as possible and they take the dollars and buying gold. They've been trying to get a gold store, which is a fundamental change. Again, this all happens slowly over time, but it trickling up and uh, eventually there could be some sort of breaking point. Is that why gold is record highs? Yes, that's a huge part of it. Another part of it is that uh, people are sniffing out that we may not be done in the fight against inflation. And if there is potential for more inflation in the future, then buying gold is a good hedge, which is why some people are doing it. Is that why we called China a sleeping dragon because they're hoarding gold? Yes, it's all based on... <laughs> Xi Jinping literally sits on a giant pile of gold and breathes fire. That's actually two things that are true. So it's more literal than it is metaphorical. I buy gold so I can ice on my wrist. Okay, you know that ice on your wrist is diamonds. It's jewels. A gold watch is not ice on your wrist. Like you, gotta, you gotta have, that's the ice part. You have yellow snow on your wrist. <laughs> Maybe track, why would China ever want to buy US treasury bonds if they're the enemy? Okay, well, first of all, prior to Xi Jinping, China didn't really consider US the enemy. And secondly, you know, it's a safe way to put all of those dollars and have them continue to slowly grow in value. Buying a treasury bond is just, you have all this money, what are you gonna do with these? You buy treasury bonds, hold, holds their value. Only in the Xi Jinping era has there been more of this decoupling, two poles, new soft cold war, China, US thing. Hey, truck, I started making a lot of money and I've never paid taxes. It's still all under the table and I'm basically self-employed, but I'm 25. You are making a lot of money and you've never paid taxes. That's an ultimate, that's awesome. You got to figure it out. Hell yeah, dude. I think nothing's going to go wrong. If it's all under the table, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't give you honest advice here, bro. Like you're getting paid cash. I have no idea of their capability of tracking that, but I assume eventually it's gonna, your rubber's going to meet the road, bro. The audit very infrequently. Your, your likelihood of getting audited is relatively low, but if it happens, you're just screwed because they can trace what you've bought and they have to find out where that money came from and you don't have, an, you don't have a real source for it, then you're, you're screwed. So um, yeah, I don't know. If it's all under the table, I don't even know how you really report that without a W-2 or anything. It's just such a, yeah, you can blame your employer, really. Not your fault, not your problem. I gotta be honest with you, in real life, not your fault can still be your problem. <laughs> There's many things where it could be not your fault and it can still be your problem. This could easily still end up being your problem. That's Life has a funny way of making it your problem. Atrock, I'm graduating college in a month and I was planning on doing graduate school next year for computer engineering. The more I think about it, I don't really want to go to grad school. Should I try to get a job or take it through for two years? I am a bit of a grad school hater. Not saying it can't work for anybody, but it's just very expensive. And so like, sometimes it's better just to fucking get a job, you know, get real world experience. But you know, sometimes if you can't get one, maybe you, you ride it out for two years in grad school and figure it out. Just the level of debt is scary. I'm a, I'm a very, and I'm a, I'm a big debt hater. I'm always advocating against debt at all costs. I sleep better, dude. Some people can just do it. Some people just don't mind. It stresses me out. Yeah, I'm not Dave Ramsey, bro. <laughs> but I do think of all his points that I don't all agree with, I agree with his general aversion to debt. Having less stuff, but having freedom is nice. I, I am not, I don't buy into the whole, this is very American of like, let me get a $3,000 car payment. Let me lease a jet ski. <laughs> let me have a house and then a rental home that I'm paying fucking the minimum on all my credit cards. And I'm all that shit is like just this constant churn of interest racking up. Freaks me out, spooks me. Also, if you don't live in the US, going to masters is different because <laughs> they'll pay for your schooling. If you don't live in the US, all my advice on that doesn't apply at all, dude. If you're in fucking Sweden, they're gonna pay for your schooling and you wanna learn it, go fucking do it. That's fine. But if you like freedom, <laughs> If you like riding an eagle to school and shooting your guns in the sky and having a real fucking life here in the US of A, then get ready to spend a whole fucking ton of money for graduate school.